Hey peeps, it's Jed here from Disrupt Tutoring and as always, such a pleasure to join you. Today we're going to deal with a cubic function, specifically looking for the values of k, which would allow for a function to have only one real root. And this question was kindly sent in by Lumkile. So they've given us this curve and it's a cubic function. And they've also given us the, the equation of the cubic function. So we've got f of x is equal to minus x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. And they've said to us for two marks, now bear in mind two marks, which means there isn't a lot of working out that is required. They've said to us determine the values of k for which minus x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4 equals k will have only one real root. Now when I first looked at this, I mistakenly didn't look at the mark allocation and I thought, okay, I need to try and use the discriminant. Then I realized it's a cubic function and a cubic function, we're not necessarily taught in matric how to use a discriminant in order to solve for values of k that would only give you one real root. I did a quick Google search on how you would solve the discriminant for a cubic function and it was terrifying. So <laughs> I decided that there must be a simpler way. Now, what I did is I, I said minus x, x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. And then I brought the k across. And now we need to really understand what this k means. Would you agree? Because this k is a constant, okay, it's not a variable. So when it's a constant, it doesn't matter what x is, k is always going to be the same. We know that ordinarily this minus 4 is probably this y-intercept. Would you agree that this k represents an upward or a downward shift of the curve? Right? So if we increase k, do you agree? Because there's a minus, it's decreasing. So if we have a positive k value, we would decrease the graph so it would shift down. If we had a negative value of k, so if we decreased k, the double negative would make it positive and it would shift the curve up. Now they've said to us, determine the values of k for which this will have only one real root, only one real root, okay? At the moment, how many real roots does the function have? Well, we've got an L over there and we've got N over there. So that means it has two real roots currently. Now let's think about shifting the curve up or down. Starting with up, if I shifted the curve up, this turning point would move onto the positive side of the x-axis or of the y-axis apologies so it would move on to the positive side of the y-axis and what would happen is these this part of the curve would start cutting the x-axis so all of a sudden we've moved from two roots to three real roots now let's look at the other side if we decrease k or if we decrease the curve or shift it down moving it further into the negative part of the y part of the or of the y-axis what happens this turning point leaves the intercept, sorry, leaves the x-axis and it starts shifting down, all the way down. And automatically, we're left with only one real root. So that means the best way to approach this question is to say, right, if I shift this curve down, just by 0 0.00001, automatically the curve loses a, a root and therefore we'll be left with only one real root. So let's look at how this would work in terms of k. Do you agree? that k on its own is positive, okay? So we don't necessarily factor in this negative. So what would I have to do to k? What would k have to be in order for me to shift the curve down? Now, let's test it out. If k was greater than zero, let's, let's assume one. If k was one, do you agree the curve would shift down by one unit and it would automatically move down and therefore we'd be left with only one real root? That seems to make a lot of sense. If we were to say k is less than zero, let's, let's pretend k is minus one, minus minus one becomes positive one, and therefore we start moving upwards. So that means that the correct answer for this particular question is k must be greater than zero, and it cannot be less than zero. So that does not apply. So in order to get the two marks, you would literally just have to write that down, and you would get a really good two marks. The reason you get two marks for something like this is it's a high order thinking question. Essentially, we're testing your understanding of graphs um, as well as real roots, as well as curve shifts. And that's why it's a really well-deserved two marks. 
and hopefully after this video you can bag those two marks in your next test or exam very special thank you to our sponsor for making this video possible be sure to read all about them in the description below also head over to our website for more of these epic tutorial videos if you can't find the answer to your question remember you can send us the question and we'll respond with a personalized video just for you until the next time stay epic